So we're going to talk about how to architect the high availability using OCI. So we're going to do a lab. We've done similar lab in the first training class. Uh, so it's going to be somewhat similar. We are going to create a load balancer. So the load balance helps with the uh, traffic distribution from one entry point to multiple servers. You've got multiple servers on the back end where the load is balanced between those servers. So load balancer help that also. So if one of these servers goes down, it knows about the health of that server on the back end and will move the traffic to the uh, surviving servers. Now it also helps with uh, balancing load. It tracks uh, how much load each ha server has, so it will distribute according to that. So it depends how you select what type of load balancer. Second, because of this, it helps with the uh, resource utilization. So if uh, if there is a server which is uh, using a lot of CPU, this is going to help move load from that server. Incoming load, the future load, uh, will be moved to where the more resources are available on that server. Again, it helps with scaling, so you could uh, design a load balancer, the load increases could uh, increase the number of servers. Uh, so spin out more servers. We are not going to do that, but that is also one option you could do. And finally, high availability. So as I said, if there are multiple servers, one of them goes down. So the connections coming in, they will be sent to the healthy node. So what do we need for that? We would need a virtual cloud network and a load balancer. We're going to take two of the virtual machines, computer instance, and we'll in install a web server on that. We will also open up the firewall rules so the HTTP and HTTPS traffic can uh, egress and ingress to this service. And they will put an index file, so that's how we would know which server we are connecting to. So it will be just kind of a name of, a, of the server. So when we take one of the servers down to check how high availability works, you would know it connects to the second server. So let's get started. OK, so we're going to start with the lab. The first thing we're going to do is create a cloud network. I'm just going to name it High Availability VCN. Uh, we are just going to create the network. We are going to add uh, all the subnets and uh, security list route tables uh, separately. So that way we can make sure we are securing it uh, properly. So we've created the uh, virtual cloud network. Uh, there is a default security list. OK, so the v VCN is created. Now let's add a subnet. So we're going to say, HA subnet 1. We're going to keep it in the first domain. I'm just going to give this subnet uh, 10.0.1.0.24. Uh, for now, we'll just select the default. We're going to make this a public subnet. So we can download the software we need to add the HTTP server. We are going to go with the default security list for now. Create a second one. We'll go with the availability domain 2. And we'll go with uh, 10.0.2. We used one for the first availability domain. Again, we'll do go with the defaults. It's a public 
सबने so we should have two subnets created so next step we will go and uh, create the instances you have to keep in mind we should be in the same compartment while doing this otherwise it's not going to work so i'm going to make this web server 1 going i'm going to go with all the default shape and size I'm going to paste the ssh key it's the same key which i've been using so this generally takes time but in the meantime i can get the second one created it's in second one is an ad2 that's how we can uh, test uh, high availability we're going to paste the key we're going to select the second subnet so this is going to take few minutes so let me pause the video here and we'll start again okay so both the instances are created so now in order for this instances to access the internet we need to have a internet gateway in place so let's go to networking So I'm going to name it H A I G W. And we want to make sure we have access, we have can route to the internet gateway. Now we need to update the route table. The default route table so it can talk to the whole world save it our network is in place so now with the vcn in place we can move forward and uh, let's uh, install the uh, http server on uh, one of the web servers So we're going to log into the server here. SSH into it. I'm going to get the private key. So I'm logged in. First thing I'm going to do is sudo as as root. So I'm root now. So I have uh, privileges to install the server. So first I'm going to install the HTTP daemon This took around a couple of minutes so i'm checking the status on the on the server and it says it's dead it's inactive 
So I'm going to get the HTTP server started. So it's done there. Now I also want to make this uh, change permanent uh, in the sense is whenever the server reboots, the HTTP uh, server should start with the node reboot. So I don't have to do this manually going forward. So the command to do that is you are going to modify the config file. Now I'm going to switch to a directory where the HTTP index files are, are stored. And that's the first file you will, once you try to log into that server, uh, that's the file you, you generally see. So this is where var www.html, that's where those index files are stored. So let me create one index file. I'm going to insert uh, And I'm going to give it a one. So because this is on our server number one. So this file I'm going to save it. Now, this is done. Now we want to make sure the firewall on the server are open for for us to uh, communicate the, with HTTP and HTTPS protocol. So HTTPS is open, and this is the syntax to syntax to open the firewall. So both of them are successful. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video here, and I'm going to do the same installation on the server number two. Okay, so the web server was installed on both the servers. Now we are going to create the network where the load balancer has to be in a public subnet because that's where the traffic is coming in. And this is the point where you don't want your private instance. So our web servers are going to be behind a firewall or in a private subnet. So they don't have contact to the external internet. It's only the load balancer. So to anything which comes in has to come through the load balancer. That That's how we make it secure. So in this task, what we are going to do is we're going to add a security list, a route table, and we are going to have two subnets for the load balancer because one for uh, in each subnet. So let's get started. We are going to first start with the, the security list. create security list and I'm going to give it like LB security list because it's for the LB LB security list here and uh, the compartment is going to be the same compartment high availability everything is happening in the same compartment 
and we are going to delete for now we are going to delete the any of the existing ingress and egress rules and the rules will be automatically added when we create the load balancer and we we connect all the resources together so i'm going to say create here now we'll add the route tables I'm going to name this LB route table. We're going to use the Internet Gateway. So the route table is added to. So now we are going to create the subnet. So as discussed, we are going to have two subnets, one for each availability domain. We are going to select the LB route table, and this is going to be a public subnet. We'll take the default, and we are going to take the LB security list. Now I need to create a second subnet, LB subnet 2. This time it's going to go to the second availability domain and I'm going to use 10.0.5.0 slash 24. I'm going to use the route table security list and the default DHCP option. So the subnets are created. Now we'll go ahead and create the load balancer. I'm just going to name it load balancer to keep it simple. We're going to go with the 100 megabits shape as we don't need uh, we are just doing a simple test we are going to go with the network HAVCN it is going to be a public load balancer and here's where we select the two subnets so we'll start with the subnet 1 and subnet 2 that way it can balance the load between the two so this ensures high availability and that the load balancer, balancer is active only in one subnet at a time. This takes a few minutes, so we can pause the video. So it is created, as you see on the screen. So we're going to create the backend sets, and we'll just name it LB backend sets. And the policy we're going to use is weighted round robin. So this way it uh, balances the load depending on the weight on the server. We're going to leave uh, SSL and session persistent of HTTP protocol port is 80 and the path is root forward slash. So this creates, uh, so the work request is submitted and this creates the backend set.
So the security list used by your load balancer subnet is updated to allow egress traffic uh, from the load balancer to each backend server. So it allows egress traffic to the backend server subnet 1 and subnet 2 and also allows ingress traffic from load balancer to subnet 1 and subnet 2. Now we can look at the backend set. Now we're going to edit the backend set. So in order for us to do that, we will go to view backend set and edit backends. So here we need the OCID for the instance. So I'll, I'll open up another tab. And I'll copy the OCID. Again, the port is going to be 80. And uh, we're going to go with help me create proper security list rules. So basically, that helps creating the right rules and it's done behind the scenes. So we don't have to worry about how the load balancer connects to the two backend sets. So that is done behind the scenes. So this uh, creates our uh, backend set. So now it uh, generates those uh, security list also. So this is what it's saying for egress, we are going to use the LB security. And for ingress, we are going to use the default security list, which was created initially. So once it's succeeded, we can click on uh, create rules. And that's what's going to update those. A security list in the background. So the rules will be updated. So we have the subnets in place. Now we're going to create the listener. So for that, we'll go to the virtual cloud network click on load balancer and the listener will show up here so we have the backend sets we're going to create a listener here so the listener is an entity uh, which checks for the connection request. The load balance sir, listener listens for ingress client traffic using the port that you specify. So within the listener, the load balancer public IP, we define the HTTP request with the port 80 and we'll select the backend sets and we'll keep the default timeout uh, in seconds for now. Uh, definitely you can change it also uh, uh, maybe we'll keep it 20 let's try that so the default is 60 uh, this is just to brush up things so you don't get you don't have to wait till it refreshes we're going to update the lb security list here we're going to add an ingress rule And the rule is going to be CIDR. And uh, we are going to use uh, the internet 0.0.0.0 slash forward slash zero. Uh, it's going to be all port range. And the destination port we are going to use as 80.
so the address rules were updated as you see so they can uh, talk to the two different subnets so now we have the infrastructure in place so we have the load balancer uh, in place so we've got this so we've got this highly available uh, infrastructure ready uh, you can see the health check is okay so we should be good now in order to see how the load balancer works let's start with taking the ip address and uh, so this is the web server 2 which i had to do offline and this is the index file i added to the web server 2 and so it balances load between the two servers now it's gone to the web server 1 web server 2 so this is how a uh, load balancer balances the load depending on uh, what function you have chosen this is weighted round robin so it uh, set the amount of work servers have and uh, and balances the load accordingly you can also do this with a database you could have two instances instead of the web servers and same way that load balancer would uh, balance the work between the two instances now let me go to the web server one and what i'm going to do is at this stage is i'm going to stop one of the http daemon to see what happens so web server one it's down So it's going to two because now one is unhealthy. It knows the load balancer knows, and it's not going to uh, to bring it back online and balance the load because it's not healthy. Now here also, if you if you see the load balancer actually does a health check also uh, in the background. So this is where you'll see it so in this case number of free try is one timeout in milliseconds so 600 millisecond if there is a one timeout makes it as unavailable and this is the status code and this is where it looks for the file and that's where it cannot find because the http the daemon is out so definitely you can change this timings to how your application behaves or what your application requirements are so eventually this will get a warning so in the meantime what we could do is we could stop the service here also syntax and bad gateway because now both are down and as you see it went to warning because one was down eventually it will go to critical when both because both are down now but in the meantime i'm going to start up the first one so the first one is back up the second one is still down and uh, we can go back and start the second one so the second one should be up soon here you go so so that's that's what it is and eventually this will come back to normal but it takes it will go through the timings here so there is an interval of uh, 10,000 millisecond I could make this like so it should be 1000 minimum you know after 1000 millisecond it is going to ping again to check if the servers are healthy they are healthy because we started both of them and both of them are online so this would change back to okay overall health as okay
So as you see, it's back to OK. So that's how load balancer helps and makes it a high available environment.